With Mathematic Online, it's easy to turn anything into an interactive model. Thanks to a single command called Manipulate, you can turn something like a static graphic into a sophisticated and dynamic model. So let's make another new section, and this one will be called Making Interactive Models. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to create my section cell, but again, you can use any of the methods uh, you want also. I'm going to press the down arrow key to start a new input cell. And I'm going to plot the graph of sine of x, since we seem to be using that function a lot today. I'm going to use the function plot, enter my square brackets, and then add my expression, which is sine of x. Then type my curly braces to enter the range for x, which we will have go from negative 10 to 10. Then to evaluate, go ahead and hit uh, shift enter. The command we are going to use now to make this dynamic is called manipulate, and you can wrap it around any Wolfram language expression to create an interactive model. So let's type manipulate uh, in a left square bracket to the left of the plot command, and then a comma on the right, and then a right square bracket to finish the command. Now we are missing some important information, and Mathematica Online is alerting us to that fact by putting in a red caret to highlight where it expects us to add this command. What we need to do is introduce some parameter that we want to manipulate. And then, where the red caret is, we need to give Mathematica Online some basic bounds for that parameter. So I'm going to introduce a parameter called frequency by typing that into the square brackets for the sign command. And I am also remembering to use the asterisk to indicate that I want to have frequency multiplied by x to make sure that Mathematica Online realizes that frequency and x are two different symbols. Now I go over to where the red caret is and I give Mathematica Online a range of values for this parameter frequency that I've just added. Since we give domains and ranges inside curly braces, I'll add a pair of those. And then I will put frequency uh, comma one comma five just like we have seen with other functions. Instead, this time my symbol is called a frequency instead of something shorter like x. Now we hit shift enter and we get a plot of that result. But we also get an interactive controller, in this case a slider bar that is labeled frequency. And as we move the slider, we can see what happens as that value changes. Now oh, it's pretty impressive for something that was like 20 seconds of work once you cut out all of my talking. Let's make our model a little more interesting by introducing a new parameter. This time, let's add in a symbol called phase, and we'll put that to the right of the x inside of the sign command. So we'll end up with frequency times x plus phase. Since we've added phase as a new parameter, we need to give it a range of possible values. So we put a comma after the list that contains frequency, and we'll copy that same syntax to make a new list for phase. So we'll have phase go from, let's say, 1 to 10, and then hit shift enter to evaluate. Now our interactive model will have two sliders, one of which controls frequency, and the other one which will control phase. Manipulate does all of the heavy lifting for us, which makes it really quick and easy to build these interactive models. So let's go a step further by changing sign in our model to a symbol called function. As before, we need to give Mathematica Online some choices for values that function can take on. So we start by creating that list to hold the values as we have done before. This time though, it doesn't make sense to give Mathematica Online numerical values if we are going to want to choose between different functions to graph. Then we should just give Mathematica Online a list of choices. We can do this by creating a sublist which contains sine, cosine, and tangent as possible options. Once we evaluate, we will see that our model lets us change frequency and phase using sliders and we now have a new row of buttons that can be clicked to toggle between different functions to graph. Not bad for a beginner. And of course, we can also hide the Wolfram language commands and just show the interactive model, which is useful if you want your audience to focus on what you have created and not so much on how you have created it. 
In the next video, we'll take a closer look at how to access computable data from the Wolfram Knowledge Base, or input your own data from files like spreadsheets, and then use this data in your own calculations.